Wonderful. Thank you, Secretary Kerry, for that uh, outstanding and exciting opening of this food security, resilience, and climate event at the President's African Leaders Summit. Uh, we're, of course, very enthusiastic to have the opportunity to be with leaders from across the United States, across Africa, experts in, uh, in agriculture and climate change, and uh, a team of people who have been working together for years to really ensure we tackle the dual challenges of preventing climate change from wiping out our gains and continuing to fight hunger and extreme poverty where it is far too prevalent. And I am uh, thrilled that Secretary Kerry has lent his tremendous leadership to this topic, not just as Secretary of State, but during his long tenure in the United States Senate. And of course, we all know that the passion and commitment to this uh, subject comes from President Obama himself, who in his inaugural address, uh, his first inaugural address, made the bold claim that we would help small-scale farmers, primarily women, all around the world. And in just February of his first year in office, launched the L'Aquila Initiative at his first G20 to raise resources and political commitment around the world to tackle hunger, create climate smart agricultural opportunities, and build greater resilience around our planet. Uh, I am so excited to be here today with outstanding leaders who have been fighting this fight and succeeding in Africa and the United States. Uh, Prime Minister Halamariam of Ethiopia needs no introduction to you, but he has positioned Ethiopia at the cutting edge of agricultural development, a founding member of the new Alliance for Food Security, and really a model for both rapid reductions in child death and parallel increases in agricultural productivity. Thank you, Prime Minister, for being with us. Representative Betty McCollum is a Democrat from Minnesota, is leading the charge in Congress on a bipartisan basis to help institutionalize initiatives like Feed the Future and ensure that our commitment to tackling hunger and extreme poverty remains a major and central part of American foreign policy for years and decades to come. Thank you, Betty, for joining us. And Madam Zuma, the chairperson of the African Union, uh, a leader in her, uh, on a range of issues, uh, probably the most passionate and effective and strongest advocate on behalf of women and girls in the context of African development. Uh, we are so proud to associate this effort with your leadership and we recognize the very central and important role you have been playing to ensure that food security remains at the top of the agenda in Africa and around the world. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to start with a question for the Prime Minister. Uh, we have had the chance to work together for years, and you have recently joined 50 other heads of state to commit to a new set of ambitious goals. Uh, the declaration that uh, Secretary Kerry just made reference to. Could you talk about why these goals are important and what you believe uh, they will mean for Ethiopia as you look forward to a day when you've wiped out hunger and protected vulnerable communities because of the strength and resilience of your economy? Uh, thank you very much, Raj. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for a very important gathering today. Uh, simply because African Union has uh, launched a year celebration on agriculture and food security this 20, 2014. And I think uh, we have come to Malabo uh, simply because uh, we have launched uh, 10 years ago a program called uh, Comprehensive African Agricultural uh, Development Program, which is an, an instrument for the last 10 years, uh, we have gone through uh, this program, and each one of us has commitment to this program to modernize our agricultural system in Africa. And in this regard, uh, we evaluated in Malabo the progress we have made in a comprehensive agricultural, uh, African agricultural program. And in that evaluation, we came to know that agriculture remains to be again, the source of an engine of growth for Africa. 
and uh, you know the livelihood of uh, many Africans is based on agricultural produce and we should focus on agriculture time again uh, for the future of the coming 10 years as well but we have challenges you know in many African countries now the climate change has you know has created lots of complications in productivity increment and um, you know the production has declined uh, because of the climate change and the, the agricultural share of our GDP in some countries has gone uh, down to 4% or so. So this shows that we have to take care of uh, the climate change issue as an African leaders and African governments at this time seriously so that uh, we can combat the climate change issue properly. So we introduced now in our uh, next step uh, in uh, uh, the program that climate smart agricultural production system it should be the basis for the future program we have launched in, uh, in Africa. So I think uh, the African leaders has come to understand uh, the severity of climate change and its impact much more than ever now uh, in this uh, summit. And therefore we have to continue on to pursue uh, and be more committed to uh, actionable you know, programs in each one of uh, our countries. And therefore, this is high time for us, uh, the African leaders, uh, to commit ourselves to have a concrete and measurable targets for the coming 10 years. So that was the basis why we African leaders uh, need to uh, work very hard to combat the climate change issues. It is possible, uh, you know, we are as responsible global citizens, even though our contribution is insignificant as far as the global greenhouse uh, gas emission is concerned. But we need to focus on our own way to show that we have moral responsibility for this globe, as Secretary Kerry said. Now it is, uh, you know, it's high time that things are not just theoretical, but happening now in every corner of the globe. So we need to have responsibility, a moral responsibility, to discharge our own responsibility in, in Africa. Well, Prime Minister, we're so proud of our partnership with Ethiopia. You have, in the last few years, protected 7 million children from requiring food assistance when the rains didn't come in 2011. You've had these big yield improvements. And as you point out, if the high-end IPCC estimates uh, take place, you could have a 20 to 30 percent reduction in yields. And so your uh, focus on behalf of the continent on climate smart agriculture is an area where we intend to be, continue to be good partners, bringing American research and, and partnership to that task. Madam Zuma, you have, in addition to focusing on the Malabo Declaration, uh, you have also uh, made the point that it is women who power African farms. It's women who provide most of the labor. And we know that income gains that go to women are far more likely to reduce malnutrition, increase school attendance, and create a pathway out of poverty for communities. Could you share your impressions of our partnerships in food security and your assessment of the Malabo Declaration? Thank you. I think we are very correct that uh, women are the ones who at the moment power agriculture. But as one of the uh, leaders in the African continent in that debate in Malawi, in Malawi said that people say hard work pays. But if women, African women were paid for their hard work in agriculture, they would be billionaires. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> but we need to ask ourselves and to help the women, why are they not billionaires with such hard work? Of course, we, before I, I, I get to that, let me share with you some thoughts that women had just before the Malabo uh, in Malabo, actually, just before the summit. 
because they wanted to make an input into that summit themselves. And one of the things they said was they really want agriculture to be modernized. They said at the moment, the symbol of agriculture in Africa is probably a woman holding a hoe, and held hoe, sometimes with a child at the, on, on her back. And they said, I must tell the leaders and the partners that that must stop. They want that hand held hoe in the museum. <laughs> <laughs> which means they want to have access to modern implements so that they can improve their, their productivity. They also want access to more land, which partners can't do, but leaders can give them access to more land. Um, thirdly, they would like to have access to capital which partners can do, but also we can, in, as part of Malabo, there was a, a discussion about asking our banks to ensure that 30% of their agricultural lending goes to women. And I think that's what in every country we have to try and do. But again, women must be made to be farmers, not just subsistent farmers. And I think the partnership between yourselves and others and the governments must allow women to move from being just planting for the food at the home at the time, but to be farmers. But to go beyond that, to also be part of agro-processing, but I think what is important for the, for the partners and our leaders is to ensure that we are able to attract young people into agriculture. Because if we don't attract young people into agriculture, before we know, there'll be nobody in agriculture. So it's very important that we do smart agriculture so that young people can come in and see this not only as hard work, but as a business that can give them a decent living. But we also have to look at agriculture as a way of investing in people. We are saying in, 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 in the AU through our Agenda 2063, that our first priority is to invest in our most precious resource. And our most precious resource is our people. Health, education, but if, you, if they don't have food, they can't succeed. it's not going to help. So agriculture has those multi-dimensions. As a doctor, you actually know that the difference between life and death of a child that gets an infection is whether it's well nourished or malnourished. But not, it doesn't end there. You know that if a child is not properly nourished, they, are men, they will not reach their full potential mentally, besides physically. So agriculture is important for the well-being of the person, for the business side. And of course, Africa still has a lot of arable land. And if we used that arable land well, we can be able to be self-sufficient. And that's what our leaders had, were declaring. And then we can also feed the world, but we need to process also what we produce. Because if we don't process what we produce, we export raw, but we export the jobs as well that should be remaining on the continent and being accessible to young people. But 
when you export raw cotton, you export that raw cotton with the jobs that it creates in its processing. We, so we need those jobs in Africa. Yes. And, and we have seen uh, through your leadership that uh, the AU declarations are followed by countries like Ethiopia increasing their domestic investment in agriculture, knowing that agricultural investment is three to four times more likely to reduce poverty and provide women opportunities than other forms of GDP growth. So thank you for, for your leadership. But lastly, we need skills, scientists who are going to innovate and make sure that we have climate smart agriculture, new implements, so we need that, not only to grow, but to grow the skills as well. Your story about the hoe in the museum reminded me of President Obama was in Senegal last year with President Saul and had the chance to visit with a farmer named Nimna who told her, him a story how she used to have a hoe and she used to uh, work the field herself. She became part of the Feed the Future effort and she showed him pictures of her tractor and mobile phone, which was how she was running her multi-farm enterprise at the time. <laughs> Congresswoman McCollum, you are leading the charge in Congress to institutionalize this focus on climate smart agriculture and you have done an extraordinary job of bringing businesses and faith institutions and Republicans and Democrats together. Sometimes it seems it's hard in this town to bring everyone together around a particular idea. What, are, what is your experience on behalf of uh, the president's food security vision? Well, I'm, it's an honor to, to be here with uh, my brothers and sisters and, uh, and your leadership on this, uh, Doctor, has is, is been outstanding and I'm so proud of President Obama. Uh, working in partnership, true partnership, uh, because uh, I have had the opportunity to travel in Africa a lot, and Africa knows what Africa needs, it just needs a good partner. And so uh, the Feed the Future initiative, uh, which is the focus of my legislation that I'm working on with uh, members from the Republican side of the aisle, the administration, and as the administrator pointed out, is a public-private partnership here to work in partnership publicly and privately in Africa as well is uh, for doing just what, uh, the, what you were describing, focus of, with a strong focus on women because uh, I've been out in the fields in Malawi with, with, with the women just before the rains uh, came and, it's, and it is women, often they had children on their backs. I got to watch the children because they didn't trust me with the planting. But, uh, <laughs> but it, and I'm from a farm state. Um, but it, it, was, it was really, um, really interesting. The women knew what they needed. Uh, they just needed the partnership in, in, in getting it there. And um, your point about health and, and what Secretary Kerry said about uh, education, um, what really convinced me that Feed the Future needs to be one of the top U.S. foreign policy tools in our toolbox for partnership is when I was going around when I was just elected on PEPFAR, I had uh, the opportunity of being in Tanzania and witnessing something that still haunts me to, to today. There were two women, they literally lived across the street from one another in Dar es Salaam. One had a family network and support, and she had access to food and nutrition, and she had enough weight on her to start taking ARVs. A woman right across the street from her had an eight-year-old boy who was doing the best he could through what we call panhandling, begging, to bring home a little nutrition for himself and his mother. She was not going to make it to receive ARVs and that child was going to become an orphan. And I realized we need a whole of government approach, not only here in the United States in partnership with Africa, but Africa, as, as I heard, I was just at the help lunch, is developing its whole of government approach. So I know Feed the Future works. I've seen it firsthand. I know that the value added after we get the sustainability and the climate um, um, you know, portion in partnership with Africa, the value added, which we call you know, processing at home. We have many businesses in the United States who want to be a partner with Africa. So I'm so pleased to, to be here today and to be part of this outstanding panel. And it's, it's good work that we do together. And I just want to close with this because Feed the Future does focus on women farmers a little bit. I heard a lot of people talk about you know, the, the bread raisers, you know, the, the bread earners. Well, women make the bread. We grow it and we bake it. <laughs> well, thank you. 
Thank you, and it's been great also to see the bipartisan support for this vision that has been fundamentally African-led. And I recognize our time is very short, but maybe I could ask uh, Madam Zuma and Prime Minister uh, to both offer a, a very quick final word. What word of advice do you have for American businesses, political leaders, cabinet secretaries, and, and scientists as, as we leave this uh, session today and continue to commit ourselves to this partnership? Well, thanks. I think they should believe in Africa. <laughs> and secondly, I think Africa is a good partner. We know where we're going. As she has just said, we need good partners. And we think this partnership can grow even to higher heights. And we appreciate the partnership, but let's get it through. We will be there with you. Prime Minister. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, um, we have the commitment, but we have lack of capacity uh, to discharge uh, the commitment we have to make an uh, actionable programs. And we need the support of United States government and people in terms of building our capacity uh, to enhance you know, our fight of climate change. But also to the uh, private sector, I would like to say that Africa is having 60% uh, of uh, the global Arab uh, where you can come and invest in Africa. And therefore, uh, this partnership will help uh, to produce because uh, in the coming 35, 30 years, we'll be having 50% uh, more demand for uh, you know, uh, food crops. And in that sense, we need to invest now so that we can reach uh, that demand in the future. So I just want uh, business people to come and invest in Africa. Well, uh, we very much endorse that vision. And Secretary Kerry noted that tomorrow we'll be making some new announcements around the new Alliance for Food Security to demonstrate uh, that American and African businesses continue to have more and more confidence in your leadership and in Africa's growth potential from an agricultural perspective. Thank you so very much for sharing your vision and your commitment and your very real success. And I'll close this panel on the final note that uh, since President Obama made that commitment in his inaugural address as a result of the bipartisan support for Feed the Future, today 12 million fewer children are hungry because of this combined partnership that you lead. Thank you. Thank you so much.